So this antiphon for today begins with the title, Lord. And in the Latin text of this antiphon, the word is Adonai. Um, but actually, it's not originally a Latin word. It, it's actually originally a Hebrew word, um, Adonai. And um, this, this word is a title that's used for God throughout uh, the Old Testament scriptures. Um, but maybe more, even more fascinating than when we do find it written in the scriptures is when we don't find it written in the scriptures. Um, and what do I mean by that? Well, th there are many names and titles um, which Jewish and Christian people throughout the centuries have used to refer to God, um, as you can tell by these O antiphons. But some, some of those names and some of those titles are particularly special. Um, and a prime example of this in the Old Testament is when God uh, reveals himself to Moses in the burning bush towards the beginning of the book of Exodus. Um, after God speaks to Moses out of the burning bush and tells him to go to Egypt to set his people free, we hear the following dialogue between Moses and God. Then Moses said to God, if I come to the sons of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So, what kind of name is that? I am. It's, um, you know, biblical scholars have debated endlessly about what this name actually means, whether it's a name at all. Um, and it's really quite mysterious, quite, quite profound um, for us to reflect on uh, what, what this means about who God is. But I think when we hear this name, God give Moses this name, I am, we can recognize in it both a profound revelation of who God is, what God is, and at the same time a recognition of just how mysterious he remains from our point of view. And so this name uh, for God is used all over the Old Testament. Um, I read that it's, it's used over 6,000 times um, throughout the books of the Old Testament to refer to God. But whenever a devout Jewish person um, were to read these texts out loud, um, he wouldn't, he actually wouldn't pronounce that word. Um, but instead, he'd say, Adonai, Lord. And why is that? Well, just cons consider the sheer awesomeness that, that God himself, the God of the universe, the source of all that exists, came so close to his people as to tell them his own name. Um, and so the ancient Israelites realized the immense privilege that they, they had been given, the immense gift to know God so intimately. And so they strove to, to really show a great reverence and love for this name, even to the point of, of speaking it very, very infrequently. And um, it was even part of 
the law that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai, that one of these, what we know as the Ten Commandments, was you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And so for us, too, how, how important it is to recognize just this great gift of how we know God, how we know who he is, the ways in which he reveals himself to us, the names by which we know him. And so as we conclude this reflection, I invite you just today to ask the Lord to deepen your reverence, to deepen your love for all the names by which we know him. And just to lead you to a deeper appreciation of the immense gift um, that it is for him himself to come to us and to reveal himself to us. And if you're interested in going even a little bit deeper, um, I would recommend, you know, if, if you're interested in a text that shows kind of how Christ himself became, uh, came to be called by this same name above every other name, um, check out the book, uh, the letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 6 to 11. It's a beautiful early Christian hymn to Christ that just kind of expresses how, um, how we recognize Christ to, to himself be Adonai, Lord, to whom belongs this name of God. Oh, Adonai, et dux domus Israel, qui moisi in in ye flamme rubi, aparu isti, at e in sina legem dedisti. Veni, ad redimendum nos in brachio exte.